Hi, hello students. Welcome back to our channel. This is Bhaskar Bhur. We are discussing third chapter polynomials from 10th class mathematics. As in the part of this chapter, in our previous video, we discussed about the example problems which are given before exercise 3.2 and second and fourth problems from exercise 3.4. And today in this video, we are going to discuss one more important concept that is the relation between coefficients of quadratic polynomial and its zeros. As we all know that the zero of a linear polynomial that is ax plus b is minus b by a. So here the zero minus b by a, b is the constant term and a is the x coefficient. So here by doing minus constant term by x coefficient, we are getting the zero of the linear polynomial of the form ax plus b. Similarly, let us verify, let us explore, is there any relation between the coefficients of quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c and its zeros. For that, let us take one quadratic polynomial, say, 3x square plus 11x plus 9. So let us compare this quadratic polynomial with the general form of quadratic polynomial that is ax square plus bx plus c. So by comparing we get a equals to 3 and b equals to 11 and c equals to 6. Now let us first to find out the zeros of this quadratic polynomial and we know that to find the zeros of a quadratic polynomial, we have to equate this quadratic polynomial with 0. So let's take 3x square plus 11x plus 6 equals to 0. Now we need to factorize this quadratic polynomial. For that we need to split the middle term. So here the middle term is 11x. So to split this middle term 11x, we have to write as the sum of another two terms such that the product of those two terms must be equal to the product of x square coefficient and constant. So here what is x square coefficient? That is 3 and constant 6. So their product is 3, 6, 18. So we have to find a pair of factors of 18 such that their sum must be equal to the x coefficient that is 11. So what are the suitable pair of factors of 18 we need to consider here? To split the middle term 11x, very good, 2 and 9. So 2 and 9 are the suitable pair of factors of 18 such that their sum is equals to 11 which is equals to the x coefficient. So now using this pair of factors we can split the middle term 11x. So let us do that. 3x square plus 11x can be split as 2x plus 9x and the last term plus 6 which equals to 0. So now we get 3x square plus 2x plus 9x plus 6 equals to 0. Now in the first two terms x is common. So let us take x as common out. So by taking x as common out we get in, we get in bracket 3x plus 2. And in the next two terms that are 9x plus 6. So in this two terms we have 3 as common so let us take 3 as common out so by taking 3 as common out we get 3 in bracket 3x plus 2 so now again if we observe this here we have 3x plus 2 is common so by taking 3x plus 2 as common out we get 3x plus 2 in bracket x plus 3 which is equals to 0 so now this product is equals to 0 that means either any one of this linear polynomial should be equals to 0. So we take 3x plus 2 equals to 0 or x plus 3 equals to 0. By simplifying 3x plus 2 equals to 0, we get x equals to minus 2 by 3 or x equals to minus 2. So, so minus 2 by 3 and minus 3 are the zeros of this quadratic polynomial. And we have a equals to 3 and b equals to 11 and c equals to 6. 
Now let us find the sum of these two zeros. So you can write minus 2 by 3 plus minus 3. So by simplifying this we get minus 2 plus minus 9 by 3. So here we get the sum of minus 2 and minus 9 is minus 11. Minus 11 by 3 which is the sum of the two zeros. So the sum of the two zeros we get as minus 11 by 3. And if we compare this sum with the coefficients of x square plus bx plus c, here 11, 11 is the coefficient of x and 3 is the coefficient of x square. So now this sum minus 11 by 3 can be written as minus x coefficient by x square coefficient since 11 is the x coefficient and x 3 is the x square coefficient so what we get the sum of the zeros of a quadratic polynomial can be written as minus x coefficient by x square coefficient which can also be written as minus b by a and let us do the product of these two zeros the product of minus 2 by 3 and minus 3 we get minus 2 by 3 into minus 3 and by multiplying these two we get minus 2 into minus 3 equals to 6 by 3. So by simplifying 6 by 3 we get 2. The product of these two zeros is 2. But if you observe this fr fraction 6 by 3 in this in this the numerator that is 6 is nothing but it is the constant term in the given quadratic polynomial. And uh, the denominator that is 3 is also equal to the x square coefficient. So 6 by 3 is nothing but it is equals to constant term by x square coefficient. So by dividing the constant term with x square coefficient, we are getting the product of the two zeros of the quadratic polynomials. So we can write the product of two zeros as constant term by x square coefficient which is nothing but c by constant term represented with c and x square coefficient is a so we can write c by a so here we get the sum of the zeros as minus b by a or minus x coefficient by x square coefficient and the product of the zeros we get as constant term by x square coefficient let us see whether this can be true for any quadratic polynomial by taking one more example 5x square minus 9x plus 4 and if we want to find the zeros of this quadratic polynomial we need to equate this quadratic polynomial with 0 so that we get 5x square minus 9x plus 4 equals to 0 now we need to factorize this quadratic polynomial to factorize this quadratic polynomial we need to split the middle term that is minus 9x by taking the suitable factors for the product of x square coefficient and constant term so by doing this we get the factors of this quadratic polynomial 5x square minus x plus 4 as 5x minus 4 and x minus 1 so we get 5x minus 4 into x minus 1 equals to 0 so the product of these two equals to 0 that means either any one linear polynomial of this product should be equals to 0 so we take 5x minus 4 equals to 0 or uh, x minus 1 equals to 0 so by simplifying we get x equals to 4 by 5 or x equals to 1. Now we have the two zeros of this quadratic polynomial that are 4 by 5 and 1. Now let us do the sum of these two quadratic polynomials. So the sum of the two zeros equals to 4 by 5 plus 1. 4 by 5 plus 1 can be written as 1 whole 4 by 5 which equals to 9 by 5. Now if you observe this fraction 9 by 5 in the numerator we have 9 and the in the denominator we have 5 and here 9 in the numerator 9 can be written as minus of minus 9 here we are expressing 9 as minus into minus 9 why because here in the given quadratic polynomial the x coefficient is negative 9 minus 9 so for that this positive 9 can be expressed as the product of 2 negative signs. That's why we expressed 9, positive 9 as minus into minus 9 so that we can compare this with x coefficient. So now if we compare this 
fraction with the coefficients of x for x square plus bx plus c we get minus of this minus 9 is nothing but it is the x coefficient so we get minus x coefficient by and 5 the denominator 5 is nothing but it is the x square coefficient so now again we get the sum of the two zeros equals to minus x coefficient by x square coefficient or which can also be written as minus b by a now let us do the product of these two zeros that is 4 by 5 into 1 so the product equals to 4 by 5 and if you observe this fraction the 4 which is nothing but it is the constant term and 5 is nothing but it is x square coefficient so this fraction 4 by 5 is related to the coefficients that are constant term by x square coefficient so the product of the zeros of a quadratic polynomial have the relationship with the zeros as constant term by x square coefficient or we can say c by a so by taking various quadratic polynomials we can verify that the sum of the zeros is equals to minus x coefficient by x square coefficient and the product of the zeros equals to constant term by x square coefficient so these two results are always true for any quadratic polynomial so that we can conclude if we consider the two zeros of a quadratic polynomial as alpha and beta so here we say alpha and beta are the zeros of a quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c then the sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta will be equals to minus x coefficient by x square coefficient or minus b by a and the product of these two zeros that is alpha into beta which equals to constant term by x square coefficient so these are the two important things that we need to keep remember so that we can able to find the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros of a given quadratic polynomial without finding the zeros of that quadratic polynomial and using the sum and the product of the zeros we can also able to find the quadratic polynomial so let us understand this if alpha and beta are the two zeros of a quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c then x minus alpha and x minus beta are the factors of that quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c by using these two factors we can write the polynomial that is we can write k into x minus alpha into x minus beta here k is some constant so now this k into x minus alpha x minus beta will will gives us the required quadratic polynomial so, so by multiplying x minus alpha into x minus beta we get in bracket x square minus beta x minus alpha x plus alpha beta and uh, by taking x as common from the two terms minus alpha x and minus beta x we get in bracket we, we get x square minus x into alpha plus beta plus alpha beta so we have k into in bracket x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta which is the formula for finding the quadratic polynomial when we have the zeros of a quadratic polynomial so here if you observe this formula the alpha and beta we are consider as the zeros so if we know the zeros of a polynomial using using the zeros we can find the required polynomial by using this formula that is k into x square minus x into alpha plus beta plus alpha beta and here if you observe this formula here we have alpha plus beta which is nothing but the sum of the zeros and the third term that is alpha into beta which is nothing but the product of the zeros so that means if you were given by the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros we can also able to find the required polynomial that means this formula can be used in two situations when we were given by zeros we can use this formula and when we were given by the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros also we can use this formula.